morning, everyone. It is Friday, TGIF, December 11th, 2015, and this is Gersh's Gaming Diamond or Rage Quit. I, just, I put that together this morning. I just couldn't resist. Anyway, I got, uh, I have four short games that I want to show you guys this morning. Um, this past week was a really, really strange week for me when it came to StarCraft. I lost, I think, three out of the four games I played. And the fourth game, I wasn't really proud of. Um, so, uh, that caused a lot of rage. <laughs> going to be honest. But, as I said, one of the important things here is to keep your ego out of the game. So, let's just jump right in to one of these games that I lost. And, uh... Oops, and we will get started with what happened. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get this started. I'm going to keep things on the Gersh cam real quick. Um, and let's see sort of what I did well and what I didn't. So, here we are. This is a build that I was working on near the beginning of the week. Um, pretty straightforward. I'm going to keep the, uh, the production tab up. Um, so... You see here, I go, I'm going gateway first this time, then I go, I expand. Uh, I know earlier this, uh, last week I said that there was a uh, Nexus first build that I was thinking of. Um, this is, I'll say, a bit of an evolution of it. <laughs> um, so you can see I have my scouting probe out there. Alright, let's pause real quick, because this is important. This is something that I learned. So I have my scouting probe that went down here. Took a look. Zerg player. Two and a half minute mark. He's got nothing, zero, at his expansion. At his main, I can see that he's got one gas, spawning pool, one hatchery, and I'm getting killed by Zerglings. Keep this in mind. This becomes important. Let's go back to my camera and continue. All right, so things are going decently well. I got my cybernetics core in. I got two gas. I transferred my workers. I made a zealot. Here comes Robo Bay. All right, things don't seem that bad. Oh, 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 oh. And here, here comes oh, Zerglings, Zerglings everywhere. And uh, and then if we look down here, there's even more Zerglings. These are Zerglings with the speed upgrade. You can see their little wings. And uh, that's the end of this game. <laughs> I just I just quit. Now, this is probably a little premature on my part to quit this game this early. Um, but, yeah, I got Zergling rushed. I got Zergling rushed, and it worked. Well, that's a pretty depressing start, isn't it? Let's go to the next game. Well, and to make that last loss worse, just to uh, just to continue, to make that last loss worse, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Where I'm gonna keep it on the Gersh cam. Um, right at right before that game, I played another one and I got bunker rushed by a Terran player and killed. And then, uh, and he was a jerk about it too. Like he was taunting me in the chat. Um. But then just after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make myself feel better by playing a game of Hearthstone. And I lost to that, too. <laughs> um, and, and, like, I lost badly. Like, it was to a guy who was using bad cards. I don't know. He was probably playing Hunter. It was, it was a super bad morning. <laughs> the next day, this game happens. And again, I'm not really... I'm blowing through this. I'm not really focusing on things that are going right, things that are going wrong. Um... To put it simply, I scouted my enemy's base. I saw things that didn't make sense to me. I tried to alter my build accordingly. I kind of did it clumsily. I, you see, I now have a Stargate. Basically, the short version here is I think he's going Mutalisks, right? And I'm like, oh, better defend against that. And I made, So I made a bunch of Phoenix, and then he kind of did nothing with it. Alright, so I'm actually going to increase the speed on this even more because it's about the seven minute mark in which terrible, terrible things happen. Alright, so I'm going to go to the everyone cam here. Oh man, that's a lot of Zerglings. 
Yeah, look at my defenses. Look at them, look at them evaporate. Isn't that wonderful how much these defenses evaporate? And what do the Zerglings do? They run in, they kill all of my workers. Like, literally. Look at the units tab. Look at my probes, right here. 14, 13. I'm finally, like, I got some zealots. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Oh my god. Oh, it's so painful. Oh, so painful. I end up with two probes. <laughs> two probes, four zealots, three phoenix, a mothership core, and an observer. Now this guy, meanwhile, is sitting on 2,000 minerals, about 2,000 minerals, 2,000 gas. He's still got a ton of overlords, despite all of the, uh, despite the fact that I blew up like three of them. <laughs> and he's on two bases. I used to be on two bases. And I am completely wrecked. Now, hilariously, I'm going to resume this. Hilariously, as we speed it back up again, I finish fighting off this attack. And I win. Not that I should. I sit here and just rebuild, dro rebuild probes. At this point, I'm just waiting to die. And for reasons that I don't fully understand, this guy goes and he um, triple expands to various places on the map. There's one. There's a second. He gives me time to rebuild where to steal a phrase from a friend. He should have just stepped on my neck and killed me, right? My phoenix go. They kill a bunch of overlords. These zerglings can't hurt me. The only thing he can produce right now that can hurt me is queens. He also does, like, triple Evo Chaber, double Spire, because I guess he wants to spend his money, so he buys a lot of upgrades. I don't know what this guy's thinking, but he lets me recover, and then I come in with this little force of zealots and stalkers, right, at the 12-minute mark. I kill his hydras, I kill his base. We're not going to watch the rest of this. We're going to go back to the seven minute mark real quick. <laughs> do, 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 do. Give the game a minute to catch up. So what do these two games have in common? This this was actually what really what really solidified what I needed to work on this week. What do these two games have in common? What they have in common is a boatload of Zerglings. And right, at this point I'm being attacked by sixty six Zerglings. Early Zerglings, late Zerglings, Zergling Rush, Zergling Push. I'm getting killed by... I'm getting completely killed by these little annoying critters. These don't even have upgrades. Ugh. Okay. So. What exactly is a Zergling Rush? <laughs> As I quit out. So Zergling Rush is basically where the the player the zerg player sacrifices his own economy in order to get a force of zerglings into their enemy's base as fast as possible and the idea is not to kill off their army but to kill off their workers why because if there's no workers you can't make an army. You cripple their economy, and then you win. So, here's what I did. Last night, I sat down with my sparring partner, Mr. Chang, uh, who is the uh, Rion Snow player in this game, and I said, dude, Zergling rush me, over and over and over again, and I gotta tweak my build until I figure out how to defend against it. I have it on the, uh, the Chang cam, by the way, just so we can see kind of what's going on in this build. Now you know how I said when I sent out my scouting probe that it was important as to what buildings the Zerg player had. And I said one gas, spawning pool, nothing else at between the one and a half and two minute mark. This screams I'm going Zerglings early. Why? Let me advance about five seconds. Here's why. 
Zergling speed requires 100 gas, which means to do this with the maximum speed and efficiency as a Zerg player, you need to have the 100 gas from your extractor before the spawning pool finishes. So what you're going to see here is he's going to immediately start working on Zergling speed, getting a queen. Why do you need the queen? So you can get more larva. More larva means more Zerglings. Okay? So, you look, Zergling speed, queen. Bam. Okay? He's making a couple of Zerglings, continuing to make drones. Zerg are kind of low on larva at this point. Now, a lot of Zerg players, I'll be honest, part of this was Mr. Chang kind of learning how to Zergling rush as I was learning how to defend it. Okay? I'm going to go back to the everyone cam here. Making Zerglings, making Zerglings, getting extra larva, making speed. Around this time, I think most Zerg players would expand, right? His money's getting high. Okay? So now you come down to my perspective. Zerglings with speed. Oh, God, they run into my base. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Now, that didn't look quite as painful as the previous games. Why? Let's go back to the beginning and find out what I'm doing. Oop, I don't want to take command. Sorry. I'm going to go back to the beginning. That's close enough to the beginning. Alright. So what do I do here? I'm going to put it now on the Gersh cam. But I'm going to disable the camera mode. Well, what I'm doing first off is I'm building a wall or a partial wall at my entrance. I've resisted doing this for a long, long time. In Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm, Part of the metagame was, oh, you should build a wall to prevent Zergling rushes. I hated it. I hated it, I hated it. I wouldn't do it. I was obstinate. Put my put my foot down. I was like, not doing those stupid wall offs. And the reason why I didn't like it was because I felt like it limited the flexibility that I had, right? Because if you have a wall off, you know, and you want to get like units through the wall, you can't. Except I've come to realize something. If you can get a stalker through the wall, right? If, cause if you have a small hole, and, and I don't think this is positioned properly, I'm still working on that, but if you have a small hole, and you plug it with a stalker, you can get any Protoss unit past the wall. Except for the Colossus, who doesn't care because Colossi walk up and down cliffs anyway. So the Colossi go this way. The Stalkers, the Immortals, the Dark Templar, the Zealots, the Sentries, every other unit that doesn't fly, do 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 can go through here. And then furthermore, once you expand and take a third base, you're not making units back here as a general rule anyway. You're making units here. Why? Because you want them to defend your third. It's the most vulnerable piece. And you can always warp in units back here. That's why you're Protoss. That's why the Protoss are awesome. But I digress. So I'm building a wall. And I do that, and I build the gateway, and then I expand. Earlier this week, I was doing expand first builds, and I just... Let me, let me digress another moment here. You have to change your play and your strategy to fit the metagame, right? And if the metagame in the league that I'm playing in, silver, right, is lots of cheese, lots of rushes, you have to have a build that addresses that, because otherwise, you die. <laughs> there's, a, there's a YouTube channel called Filter SC, and uh, recently posted some videos. Um, I think it's kind of a continuation of the, uh, Diamond, uh, of the Bronze to Master series uh, that he did in Heart of the Swarm. And one thing he says is the fundamental rule of StarCraft. Get a lot of stuff, and don't die before you get a lot of stuff. One of the things I said in my last episode was a 60-food army is going to beat a 30-food army 90% of the time. That's where the get a lot of stuff comes in. This episode is devoted to survive until you have the stuff. So, I go gateway, I go core, I expand in a couple of minutes here. There we go. This build is still rough. Ooh. My goodness. This build is still rough, right? But it's getting there. Here's the other key. Mothership core and strategically placed pylons. Pylon at the entrance. If I can actually choke this off, this pylon, I can photon overcharge, bam, can get, can 
I, I think it two shots Zerglings, and it fires pretty quick, as you'll see here in a moment. Also, keeping a pylon next to my Nexus. And, actually, as, as I go on, maybe this pylon should be positioned here, so it can better protect my probes. This is still a work in progress. What I'm trying to show is the small changes, the small improvements that I can make to to increase this. So I got another gateway here. This should have been positioned a little higher again so I can plug this hole because as you see, the hole is not plugged. <laughs> see, there there go the zerglings. You have to block it off completely. All right. So, this still isn't working. So, let's move on to the last game here. This was I I literally played 12 to 16 games against my sparring partner last night just to say we are going to make this work <laughs> right we are going to practice and make this work so this is the new strategy I'm going for and I'm gonna use this against Zerg and we're actually gonna go through this whole game I'm gonna use this against Zerg in my league for the foreseeable future this build still needs some refining the timings at the beginning are not perfect for example, I was late on the pylon, late on a probe there. But you know what? We're just going to keep going anyway. Okay. And I will say, this is one of the harder maps to prevent a Zergling rush on. Why? It's because your natural expansion is not behind your main base. It's here. Which means the Zerglings are going to run up through this area, not this one. And because I do want to do a relatively early expand still, because once you defend the Zergling Rush, you have to still win. And having a stronger economy than the Zerg player, that's that's the whole goal, is defend the Rush while having a stronger economy, and then you can crush them. So I want to expand, and I want to expand early, but I need the gateway first. This is also a harder area to wall off, right? Because it's a wider ramp than, say, this. So... This, this is what we practiced on. This is eventually, we did, I think, three, four games just on this map. Because I think this is the hardest map to prevent the Zergling rush on. So we're going to do Gateway, then Expand. And I know I drop a probe for about 10, 15 seconds to do that. I'm still working on it. We get the gas. We get another pylon. Then, and again, this is a little bit late, get the Cybernetics Core. The idea is you have to have the mothership core up. That requires gas. So we actually go a second gas pretty quickly. Actually, that should have been a little bit earlier, to be honest, right? Second Nexus is about to come up. I'm using this additional pylon. I've now got... Now, look at the pylon placement. I've got two pylons at the entrance. If I can block this here... I can defend using these two pylons with the Mothership Core. If, if they get past here, I have a pylon defending these workers. If they decide to go here, I have a pylon defending these workers. Okay? So, four pylons. Placement's very important. Alright, so here I go. I'm transferring workers. I'm getting the Mothership Core. Yay! I'm making probes. Yay! I'm researching Warp Gate. Yay! Okay. Now, at this point, I kind of got some extra money. I really need to be making some gateways. Oh, I go Robo first. So, again, this is work in progress. I need to be making more gateways at this time. My money's getting a bit too high. And here come the Zerglings. I have no units right now. Again, work in progress. They're coming in at the three and a half minute mark. Where do they go? They run past my wall. I turned that cannon on. I used my probes to defend. Ugh, not so good. Not so good, but I did get this photon overcharged, right? Um, and yes, they two shot Zerglings and they fire more than once per second. Isn't that awesome? Okay, but stay calm, stay calm. I don't know why I moved my probes there. That was a total mistake, but that's all right. I fix it eventually. Here come more Zerglings. Oh, God. All right. Keep calm. Keep defending. Right? 
Now look at the worker count right here. Despite the fact that I've lost 8 workers, and he's lost 20 zerglings, and I've now got the hole plugged, right? See? See how much easier this becomes when they can't get through the door? Uh oh, no, they got through the door. And he's got roaches now, too. Right? This hurts, but... Gotta keep calm. Gotta keep... Gotta keep defending. And, again, I'm still ahead on worker count, and now the army supply is starting to even up. Okay? So now, the next piece of this build is I've got to do some counter-harassment of my own. So I make a warp prism. I make four adepts, stick them inside. Oh, look, I'm about to be attacked one more time. But you know what? I'm going to go for it anyway. Because I feel like with these two pylons, I can defend that. Now, to be honest, my sparring partner at this point probably should have stopped with the attacks and transitioned into something else, but I was kind of pushing him. Now, I bring the warp prism down. I pull out adepts. I warp in some more adepts. Some other interesting things I learned. This warp prism... Even when he's in phasing mode, which is when you can warp stuff in, you can load and unload units into him. That's cool. If you, if I had better micro, that would be super useful. Here's another thing. I'm getting Zealot Charge. This is this is the new strategy. And and again, I got this from the uh, Grandmaster Protoss that I've been trying to mimic. Um, mimicking is an important tenet of StarCraft. Uh, so says Day9, Lord of all StarCraft strategy. Um, day, just for those of you who aren't as familiar with StarCraft, Day9 is a uh, streamer who did a, a lot of videos back during the Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm days, the first two expansions, um, talking about different ways to improve your game with StarCraft. Um, and one of the things he said is that, first off, having a sparring partner is very important so you can practice. And the second thing is having high-level players that you're mimicking, especially if you're bronze, silver, gold league, is super important. So, take my warp prism, I come over here, now look who's getting their workers attacked, right? Warp in some more guys, take out the queen, take out, oh, oh, now look at the worker killed count. Yeah. It's starting to become a little more even now. Okay. At this point, I'm, I'm basically winning. I'm still defending pretty decently well up here. These pylons, you know, combined with some warpins over here. Um, and I think my first immortal comes out. We don't need to watch the rest of this. You guys get the idea. So. That's the new strategy. That's what I'm going to be continuing to refine and practice this week against real opponents on the ladder versus Zerg is a build where I go gate, expand, I'm sorry, gate, gas, expand, core, gas, robo. But as soon as the core is up, get the mothership core, strategically place my pylons, get better at trying to wall this off, probably do some custom games just by myself in order to figure out where the right building placement is, and then Zealot Charge, because Zealots with Charge do well against Zerglings, they do well against Roaches, they do well against Hydralisks, they do well against Ravagers, they die against uh, Lurkers, but the idea is to attack before he has Lurkers. When to attack, that's probably a discussion for another another video. <laughs> another week. Back it up with stalkers, because hey, stalkers are great, right? Um, and then immortals, because immortals are also really good against roaches. They're also um, really good against ravagers, against lurkers. Um... And, yeah, use this Twilight Council. Get Charge, get Blink. Blink Stalkers, Charge Zealots, Handful of Immortals, Harass the enemy with some Adepts. If this attack goes poorly, get the phase, get the Warp Prism out of there. If it doesn't go poorly, I can just pull my army down. And crush on two fronts. Man, that would feel good. That's the goal for this coming week. Refine this build. 
get it better, and hopefully next week when we uh, hopefully next week when we um, have our our next episode, we'll see lots of progress, and I'll be able to show you a good win in which uh, during which we'll pick it apart anyway and see uh, the things that I still need to work on. But that's the goal. To diamond or rage quit. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment if you have a comment. Subscribe to the channel so you get all the videos. And I'll see you all next week.